Hi, welcome. Welcome to Homekeepers. Come right on in. We're in the kitchen starting out today. And, you know, no matter what beautiful home you build, everybody ends up in the kitchen. I wanted to start out in the kitchen today because we want to get a head start on the um, recipe. Uh, we've got Jean and Carol Kent. Couldn't get any better than that. We want them to have plenty of time. So we're going to get started on the recipe which is called Best Lasagna Soup. Yes. So tell them what we've done so far. Okay, so so far we have a pound of hamburger that we that we browned up. We have a green pepper. Mm -hmm. We have an onion <laughs> and we have garlic. And I'm just sauteing that all up. And, and we've got lots of things to put in it. Yes. So while she's mixing that, I want to mention to you Saving Savvy. And boy, this is an easy to understand book and will be such a such a great thing to get any time of year and get restarted on your finances. I remember when uh, Stephanie kind of, you, you restarted on your finances, yes. made life completely different. So different. Uh, this could be the best $20 you'll ever spend. The information's on your screen. Uh, if you use that credit card, 1-800-229-0059 or write to me. And that information is on your screen as well. And as I was saying, we're making a lasagna soup and gave it a little bit of a, a jump start, so I'll mm -hmm. pass those, these things along. Yep, as so you we need have them. two cans of petite diced tomatoes with the juice. Mm -hmm. Now let me tell you, it'll change your life if you get your finances in order. Yeah, it will change everything. I will never forget because your story was pretty dramatic. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that sticks out to me that I remember you saying that you and your husband and it's beef pretty broth. beef broth. Here's another one. You sat down and you said, okay, we make enough. Yes. That we, we should be in better shape than this. Yes. yes. And uh, that's, a, that's an eye-opening moment, isn't it, when you sit down yes. with a pencil. Yeah, sometimes it's really easy to stick your head in the sand. Uh-huh. But you don't, know where you, you don't know where you're going until you know where you are. You yeah. have to know where yeah. you are. Yeah, So it'll and change your life. So this is um, tomato sauce. Mm -hmm. We have tomato paste. Now, I've never had corn in lasagna before, but it calls for it, so we're going to put it in. It just, we've it'll all add a them. nice little sweetness <laughs> to the soup. Yeah, we've all been amazed to see frozen corn. Frozen uh, corn. You know, in the lasagna recipe. And then we've got Italian seasonings and pepper. And then here's the, here's the fun part. Fun. We have uncooked noodles. Yes. You can put the uncooked noodles right in here and let them cook up right along with, with the, the soup. With the soup. Yeah. And what we're going to do is put these in and crank the heat up. And at the end of the show, That's we're going to taste seasoning. it. That was Italian seasoning yeah. and pepper. Yep. Yep. And then I'm just going to put the uncooked noodles in. And then you're just going to let this simmer and there oh, is your get all the yumminess There together. is your entree. I think a nice Chicago hard roll with mm. a lot of butter on it. And when we put it in the bowl, we'll put a little Parmesan cheese mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. It'll be delicious. So at the end of the back, show, right? we'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. We will let you know how it is. So uh, if you watch us regularly, you know that Carol Kent is a regular on our show. And what a blessing. I remember the day I was sitting in that chair and the Lord said, tell her to come on once a month. And we've been able to minister to um, some of those in prison and help them out and have some connections. But also, I think what people forget are their loved ones. Mm. Um, everything stops on yes. something like that. And you have responded I, I've been so warmed, I'm not kidding, to think that we could minister and reach out to you that life hasn't stopped and God hasn't gone anywhere and God loves your loved one who's incarcerated and he can work, this is the amazing thing, he can work anything to our good. Yes. And this horrible, horrible story of Jean and uh, Carol Kent, God has brought a lot of good out of it. So if you've never uh, met Carol before, uh, or Jean, her husband comes on with us once in a while, you're going to love it. So, also, I almost forgot to tell them they, they get the re oh recipe. Oh, my goodness, you can get the recipe. Yes, um, and they are free. How many things are free in this world today? Email's the best, but our announcer's going to come up with a, a variety of ways that you can get this recipe, and it's called Best Lasagna Soup, and after that, uh, you're going to meet Jean and Carol Kent. Good day. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. 
When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. I've always said it's a great day when Carol Kent is with us, but what can you say, you know, when Gene Kent is with us? <laughs> Welcome. Thank you, Arthelene. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, and you I'm are. I'm glad he's here, too. Yeah. <laughs> and I really come for the food, you know. I know. <laughs> food and, is and, great. Uh, we really impressed you today. <laughs> yes. Right. right. Um, I want to go over, uh, there's always people who have never heard your story. Uh, I'm going to ask Gene, you tell us, just give us that thumbnail sketch of that horrible, horrible phone call you got in the middle of the night. I, I mentioned on one program, why does it have to be at night? Yes, even though it's 18 years ago, uh, our son, we have an only child, and he graduated from um, high school, and he ended up going to the Naval Academy, of all things. And when he graduated from there, he went to a nuclear engineering school that was in Orlando. And while in Orlando, he met a young lady who had been previously married. She had two little girls that were three and six, and they ended up getting married, which was just a great time in our lives. We became uh, instant grandparents, and I'm uh, Grampy and Gram, Grams here. And in that first year of marriage, our son heard more stories of abuse that took place in that first marriage. And he heard stories from his wife about the things that the father had done to the little girls. And the father only had supervised visitation. He was trying to get unsupervised visitation. And when it looked like the judge was going to give it to him, our son just obsessed about this man to the point where he tracked him down in a restaurant parking lot on a Sunday afternoon. And he put four bullets in him, which was the farthest thing from our minds, thinking oh. that anything like this could happen. And we got that middle of the night phone call that uh, from our daughter-in-law, and she said that he had just been arrested and he was in the jail in Orlando. We were living in Michigan at the time. And that just began our journey with our son. Mm -hmm. And he was spent the next two and a half years in the county jail in Orlando. We had a trial for first degree murder. And then in, um, April of 02, we had the trial, and he was found guilty and sentenced to life in prison. It was, it was cut and dried first. Pretty degree. much, yeah. yes. And from that, <clears throat> and I want to get the website up right now. Thank you. Yes. Speak up for hope. A ministry has come out of that. Really, the way God has blessed since that off. I've tried to think. Okay, what's the worst thing? Worst thing? Worst thing? I, I don't know anything worse than that. Mm. If, if you're going to try to categorize them. You know, sometimes we think about that too. And, and we've, between Carol and myself, we've seen lots of situations when we meet people and they describe whatever their situation is that God has, um, has put them in, allowed them to be in. And we've seen things that, are, that we think are worse anyway. You know, yeah. we, we rejoice and we get to see our son almost every weekend. Whenever we're home, we can go to prison visitation. Yeah, and we're going to uh, talk about Speak Up for Hope. It's beautiful how Carol's family has just taken part in this ministry and it's, it's something you can do. And let me tell you, there's no big overhead in this. It, when, when you give to this ministry, you're not paying for a building. You're, you're not paying for gas, are you? No, <laughs> no. no. And, um, I got a check for them, and so I know I'm blowing my reward in uh -oh. heaven. I, I know that. But television is visual. That's why, yes, that's why I'm getting it out. Thank you. Now, I want to designate this. Okay. I, I know that the prisoners have an account. Some prisoners never have a visitor. They never have a letter. They never have a birthday card. They are completely forgotten. And so, but you can put money in their account. Yes. I think it's what, 25 bucks a shot or something mm -hmm. like that. And uh, there's little snacks and things that they can get. So tell Jason, I want part of this. I, I believe in the household of God, that we, mm -hmm. but part of this, I won't go to the meanest God-hating prisoner that he knows. That <laughs> All right. And yes. Just, like yeah, that. <laughs> and say there's a woman in Central Florida 
who wants you to know that God loves you, that Jesus loves you, and you're going to have some money in your account for some That's beautiful, Arthur. Thank I you. love thank that, you, Arlene. Thank you. Yeah. And that's the first step. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we, we just love ministering to the people who aren't lovely at all. They, they are just nobody you would pick as your best friends, yeah. but they're usually the most in need of, of sensing God's love and it melts their heart that somebody would care for them. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Yeah, I want I want the meanest oh. one to have it. <laughs> and you know, um, you know why I love Speak Up for Hope? It's because it's just so grassroots. Uh, do you have a big board somewhere? We, we have a board, <laughs> a uh, tiny but it's board. not very big. <laughs> you have meetings every month. <laughs> Sit around the mahogany table and say, now where are we going to put this $25? Oh, yes. But uh, tell us some of it. <clears throat> we got some visuals here. Yes, and uh, Arthelene, we had the most wonderful time when he, oh, we opened up a box that was probably three feet tall and, and it was sizable. And inside were these beautiful hand crocheted dishcloths in all of these beautiful colors. Mm -hmm. I had and to ask my wife what they were. We got a picture of them on the screen. Oh. and. You know, you'd hate to put that in dirty dishwater. Oh, I know. <laughs> but these precious women who hand crocheted these had asked how they could help. And they said, well, we have a lot of crocheters. And so, you know, we put together these boxes of hope that we send to wives and moms wives of inmates. Wives and moms, yeah. With, uh, with lovely coffee cups and books and sometimes Bibles or beauty aids for women. But these hand crocheted dishcloths came wrapped up with a little sweet ribbon and they say, may you find peace in knowing that you were prayed for as this was being created. And we had one woman That's right back sweet. and she said, I just broke down in tears when I read that someone had prayed yeah. for me. They didn't even know my name, but they knew what my need was and they prayed for me. And then just two weeks ago, uh, a woman and her husband drove down from Hilton Head, South Carolina, and she had written ahead and she said, Carol, we've just been doing your DVD Bible study on Between a Rock and a Grace Place. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said, the women were so moved by the ministry of Speak Up for Hope, they wanted to make our project mm -hmm. collecting items. And I believe we have a picture of what these women gathered. Mm -hmm. But there were yes, beautiful, we do. oh, there it is. But there were beautiful coffee cups. and. And there were journals that the women could write in and then scented candles in every imaginable uh, color. Yeah. And it, it was like such a blessing to receive this. Yeah. And so we several times a year in my garage, we literally set it up like an assembly line to put these boxes together. And then inside there's a letter that lets the woman who's receiving it know it was prayed for for her. And, yeah. uh, and they, they, these are wives and mothers of inmates. Yes. yes. And <clears throat> I was just thinking, you, you people, when this happened, you had a great support system. Mm -hmm. uh, your very work uh, gave you the family of God around you, and you have a great, you know, uh, mother and sisters and so forth. But I'm thinking of those who don't know the Word of God like you mm -hmm. do, right. and something like this tragic happens how they must feel so alone. Yes. You want to crawl in a cave. Mm -hmm. And to have something like this. It means everything. Yeah, it does. Now, you, you helped a lady with the t-shirt. You tell the story and then we'll show the, we'll show the lady. Well, in at prison visitation, there are more rules for women to follow than there are for men. And they have to be, they're very fussy about Where can I protest what, that? I know, right? <laughs> yes. And, oh, my sign. and oftentimes they refuse admittance to a wife or a girlfriend or, or one of the children of an inmate because they're not dressed appropriately for, for whatever the, the prison appropriation is. Well, it can be just, they, have, they cannot wear sleeveless shirts. Uh, they can't wear anything that's see through mm -hmm. even if or there's white. nothing to see, or they can't wear white. They can't wear white. Yes. And so they'll get turned away to, for them to go get something if they don't have something in the car. They have to drive uh, where we're at. They have to drive 20 miles and then, and then shop, and 20 miles back, it's going to waste an hour for them. So I started taking black T-shirts and have them in the trunk of my car, and I give black T-shirts to these women. And, and you came across a lady who they were sending away. Yes. Okay, I think we I have think a, we have, a we have a picture of her. Yeah, and uh, there's a, 
th this is unbelievable. I, I thought I could live a million years and never hear a story like this. She was so thankful to uh -huh. get that uh, T-shirt that morning because it saved her an hour at least. That's well, and, and think of how many people don't have very much money right. for their gas money to get to the prison, uh -huh. to be able to feed sometimes a family of five or six, uh -huh. if you count your inmate, uh -huh. and then you have to get your food out of the food window. And for her to have to drive another uh, like almost a 40 minute round trip and spend the money on more clothing. It's just so sad because it's a gouging of these people. So uh, it has been the greatest blessing. Now even some of the guards say, hey Jean, you got one of those shirts? We have somebody who's in need. Yes. What was it? Just You just got this idea knowing these rules, yep. just have these handy? That's, I think that's the brilliant. Lord just uh, surprised yeah, me so with that idea. Who would think of that? <laughs> well, and I noticed his pile of black t-shirts was getting smaller and smaller, and uh -huh. he didn't tell me right away. <laughs> and I said, what's been happening to your t-shirts? So you just don't have as many. He said, you'll find out soon enough. And so on the day I found this out, I saw a woman turned away, and she was sobbing. And then I realized Jean was emerging from our trunk in the parking lot carrying a black t-shirt. And I saw him go up to the woman and say, here, ma'am, put this on and go to oh, the front of the awesome. line. It's awesome. my gift to your family today. And uh, he came back and I said, so that's what's been happening to your T-shirts. And mm -hmm. he said, it's my ministry. Yeah, now, uh, so let's get the uh, website back up on the screen. And uh, you, can, you can give through that and they can designate it for T-shirts if they want, right? Yes, they what can. A, uh, I, what a creative idea. What a creative ministry. Another thing that we do with Speak Up for Hope is we send Bibles to any inmate that needs a Bible. And we got just a remarkable letter just the, um, a couple weeks ago from an inmate. And I don't, can I read that? Absolutely. He just said, hello, I don't think we know each other, but you still sent me a copy of the Holy Bible. And I wanted to write and tell you thank you so very much for your generosity and for blessing me in this way. Thank you. I wanted to make sure I wrote and showed my appreciation. It takes a very generous person and someone who has the Holy Spirit alive in them to send a stranger a Bible or any kind of book. How did you know I needed a Bible? My receipt shows that you paid for the Bible I received. I'm so grateful. May Jesus continue to watch over you and bless you. Sincerely, Joe. And uh, he just sent that to speak up for all? We don't know this guy. Oh, um, he was out of state even in this one. Sometimes people write us letters and tell us mm -hmm. about inmates who need Bibles. Sometimes Jason lets us know mm -hmm. who needs a large print Bible because their sight is failing and mm -hmm. they need a, a good large print Bible. So the requests come in a variety of ways. You know, I used to sing in maximum security prisons. I bet those inmates loved you. Yeah. Well, that was years ago. <laughs> I looked younger, I guess. But I was... Uh, I was in Leavenworth. Uh -huh. I was in San Quentin twice. And um, what struck me was the variety yes. of men in there. Yes. yes. Uh, doctors. Mm -hmm. What can be dumber than putting a doctor? <laughs> we, it, tell, we tell people that it's sort of like um, anybody that you'll meet in your church, you <laughs> can meet yeah. them in prison too. Well, I think this yeah. was income tax problem. Yeah, okay. Okay, so if I were king of the world, yes. I would <laughs> take them to Appalachia and say, yes. you're going to treat people here right. for free, whatever your sentence is. Yes. We're going to lock you up at night. Yeah. But um, I think we could get a little bit more creative. Uh, artists, I had an artist draw me a pencil drawing, and oh, I yes. had one paint. Right. Oh, yes. Uh, paint. I mean, there was everybody in there. Mm -hmm. and you know, Chuck Colson pre was presenting <laughs> ideas about that, that he was suggesting that especially for white collar crime that in many cases instead of just sending them to prison and and using up all of our money to yeah. do that why don't we put them to work for nonprofits or or doing something productive other than just being sending them to prison yeah absolutely um you um I have some letters here too yes uh, one from a female uh inmate in Florida I became depressed and kill my children before unsuccessfully trying to take my own life. I was so sad that I lived. I read one of your books. I am serving life without the possibility of, of a parole sentence. And yet it was you've reached her. Yeah. And she just reached out and, and she oh, said, I, I could not believe I woke up from trying to kill myself after killing my children and realized I was still alive. 
And she said, I never want to be on the outside. I don't deserve to be on the outside. But she said, I want to make my life count on the inside. And uh, wow. Arlene, I, As I, I recall, mean, she wasn't a believer when it took place. No. And, and she, found Christ while mm -hmm. in prison. And, and then some of the inmates who get the, the food care packages, uh -huh. this, this young man just wrote, Dear Mr. and Mrs. Kent, thank you for sending me an inmate care package. Twice a year we can send these packages. Since I was sent to prison over 16 years ago, I've never had anybody put money in my inmate account. There was a new pair of tennis shoes in the package you ordered for me, along with new t-shirts and special food items that included one of my favorites, a honey bun. I'm grateful <laughs> for your son Jason asking me if I could use some help and for having these items sent to me through you. I'm so grateful that you cared enough to show this kind of compassion. I can't believe I can go for runs on the yard in tennis shoes now. Your kindness makes a difference. Thanks again, Pete. And Arthlene, I just want to say thank you to our viewers yeah. because you cared, they care. Yeah. And we have had so many donations from the people who watch Homekeepers Praise who God. say, I want to make Good a difference. And so we love you, we thank you, and the inmates and their families, thank, thank you. I, I, I don't know when I felt so fulfilled on a program because there are scriptures that can haunt you. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, I was hungry. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I had I was naked. I had no clothes and I was in prison. And, and you didn't visited. come. Mm -hmm. You didn't come. And then again he said you did come. Mm -hmm. And th then he he explained that to the disciples. Right. Mm -hmm. That Now get this. When you do it to one of these that we're talking about, you've done it for Jesus Christ. That's what he said. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. You do it to the least of these. And you know what? I'm out of time. Yeah. No. You guys are too much. It happens every time. <laughs> I know it. I know it. Let's see. We need to do a... Marathon. We, yeah, we need to do like a, a, just an hour show just yep. talking to the Thanks. Kents. But boy, I praise God you're part of this program. Oh, I really thank do. you. And I praise God you're out there too. I hope that you got that website. If not, email me or something. I can get it to you. And stay with me. I have a couple of things to say before we have to say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. Well, what's not to love about Jean and Carol Kent? I, we are absolutely blessed and fortunate to have them here. Let me remind you one more time, you want a good book on saving money, practical, that you can really learn from and teach it to your children. Uh, information is on your screen. You can do it with a credit card or with that address on your screen for only $20. Could absolutely change your financial life. I'm going to invite Stephanie back. Do you think that pasta has cooked up now? Yes. Look how, okay, I'm going to put this back here so we can get it. You know, off. it really it looks, it doesn't looks, look like a soup. It, it looks like a meal. This is a hearty soup, let mm -hmm. me tell you. So let's put some of this in here. Now, it does have green peppers in it, so I'm going to eat around that because I really want to try this. Yeah. She okay. does not like green peppers. But that's okay. It's not about me, right? Yeah. Okay, okay. Here we it's go. about our viewers, you know. Right. Oh my, look at that. Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. It's hot. Yes. Please be careful. Yeah. Okay. It's very hot. Mm. It's very tasty though. So good. Yeah. And what a oh um, my. economical meal and it's got all those vegetables in it. And look at it. all this. My goodness. I mean, it made a big pot. It had the onions and the garlic. You only need bread. Uh -huh. You only need bread to go with mm -hmm. this. You don't even need mm -hmm. a salad because this is hearty. Mm. Yeah, this is good. I'm not, this is a winner. I might be taking some of that home tonight. Yeah. You know, I wanted to ask you, um, mm. do you have anybody that you know and care about who's in prison? Not, I mean, we've had a couple of my husband's relatives that were in prison, but they're out now. Mm -hmm. But I don't have anybody right now. Mm -hmm. No. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yes. Um, I, I think it's so wonderful that we have the opportunity to put a spotlight on oh, that. Oh, for sure, because you for, you don't think of all that mm -hmm. stuff. 
You just don't think mm. of it. I remember when we were real young, we would go to the jails and sing and stuff. But I've been in maximum security uh, prisons. I even led a choir in San Quentin. Wow. Yes. I think I got time to tell this. Mm -hmm. I told the chaplain, they have a lovely chapel there. Mm -hmm. I told him, I said, I can lead a choir if you can get some of these guys. So I put together a choir of murderers and armed robbers and rapists and all. And it was funny because like the, the pulpit was here for the preacher and here was the organ. And then there were these pews here for the choir. So I'm playing and kind of leading and um, I taught them a little song. I taught them an intro, which they didn't know what it was, but that's the opening song. And so um, they sang it and you could tell they were so proud, so Aww. pleased. And then they started to sit down and I'm still playing. I looked at them just like this. I says, don't sit down till I tell you to sit down. <laughs> and they all went, <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, here are these guys <laughs> who could have torn me limb from right, limb. Right. You know? And, and like, I yes, scared them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe like their mother. But Aww. you meet such pitiful people in there. Some of them um, mental problems, mm -hmm. obviously. Uh, some of them just never really had a chance in life. Yeah, and they need Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's what they, they mm -hmm. just need Jesus. And the thing that prompted me to say to Carol that day, would you come on once a month? And I figured she could. She travels a lot, but she does live in Lakeland. It's mm -hmm. not that far. Mm -hmm. Was that Jesus used the word prison. So that encompasses so many people, not just the incarcerated ones, yes. but the brokenhearted people on the outside. Mm -hmm. So we so are true. we are very blessed for somebody with such an inside view and I'll never forget when we talked about how their Christmas has changed. Mm. Could you imagine what their Christmas was like before prison? And now they stand in line to get in there. There's not a jingle bell. There's not a Christmas bow anywhere. But there's these fences with barbed wires at the top. That's the way they spend their Christmas now. But it's been very rewarding as they've ministered to people in the line and all. You know, it's very true. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And he can take the worst situation in your life and make something good out of it. So um, God bless you. And I hope you will join us on the next um, Homekeepers program because we kind of got this love affair going with our viewers. I do pray for you. And whether you're a brand new viewer, you've been around a long time, we appreciate you. Isn't so that much. right? So yes. very much. And um, Thank you for all your notes and your kind, kind words, and uh, we will see you next time. But remember, there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.